Okay, this should be the last build update for this Pilot RC Slick that I've been working on. Hopefully the next time I show it to you, it'll actually be done. But I hit a couple of things I thought were noteworthy. Some good, some bad. So I've got the wings finished up and I did these a little bit different. You can see I actually mounted that ball link on the bottom of that servo horn because of the mechanical advantage you gave me. I thought that worked out really, really well. I did have to do a modification to this servo arm. And you'll notice this isn't the original servo arm that I planned on putting on this. And I'll explain why that change came about. But this servo arm that you can get most anywhere has a little bump on the bottom of it. And that bump was causing the hardware to hit the bottom of the wing. So I actually milled that off and this is threaded three millimeters all the way through. So I was still able to thread in the bolt, put a lock nut on it. So that's not going anywhere. So that worked out really, really well. And for the hardware here, I added a three millimeter bolt up against the server horn. So I have that double nutted with a lock nut on the outside. I should never have to worry about that ever coming loose. Uh, another thing that Pilot did really well, this bag, this wing bag actually has a section right here for the side force generators. But I'm going to end up being lazy about these side force generators. I'm not going to take these bolts out. So I made up a little piece of foam that I can put between the side force generators to keep these bolts from hitting the other side force generator. And the other thing I did is I added three millimeter nuts to the outside and glued it in with red Loctite. That way I can't lose these square nuts down in the wing. It'll stop it before these come off. But it also makes it to where if this touches the skin of the other side force generator, it really won't mar it at all. And then uh, I left myself a little pattern to know how these nuts go back into the foam. And then it just fits right in the wing bag. So that's going to be nice, easier to handle out the field. Uh, so this servo horn that I just mentioned, uh, that became a change because, as you can see here, this one was not going to fit on this wing. This is the one that Pilot sells for the 20cc size airplanes with this size servo, but you can see that clearly hits the elevator. And on the other side, it's actually even worse. Where the rudder is, that servo is back in here. And this has got a 1.6 inch hole and a 1.3 inch hole. That 1.3 inch hole would just barely miss the outer skin. And then once you get the ball link on it, it would probably scrape this outer skin. So I for sure had to go away from these. But the other thing I found is these servos have enough movement in them that even using the 1.3 hole, there was way too much movement in these surfaces. So that's why I went down to a one inch arm and these have more than plenty of movement to them for these servos. So these are working out really well, but do note that these, you're either gonna have to heavily modify them or just not use them. So the other thing I found is I, you'll see that this arm's not hooked up yet. So I had to get a new arm for here because I mismeasured the one that I bought or the, the rod that goes there. And I measured mine based on what Pilot had sent. So Pilot sent all these arms 
for the controls but what I found was I really needed one that was about this size so when I looked at it you can see pilot totally missed on this one so I'm glad I was actually planning on replacing these anyway but these would not have worked I would have had to have gotten with pilot to either get a replacement rod or bought my own or figured that out but I'm not sure what happened there and hopefully on these later kits they'll fix this but these rods are not going to work for this plane and then the thing <laughs> I actually made a huge mistake on my rudder so when I did the control surfaces I made sure I had enough plenty of movement before the control horn hit the surface except for my rudder so in my zeal to kind of get to my next step when I installed the control horn for the rudder I installed it in a way that it actually hit the the outer skin right here before I got to my 45 degrees of throw. So I hit it about 35 degrees. And so I wasn't sure what to do. And in my frustration, I actually forgot a number of things. But I called my buddy Gary and started picking his brain. And he reminded me that new epoxy can be heated up and you can actually remove this and reset it. So that was a good reminder, but what Gary really gets all the props for is how I actually got this epoxy heated up. So he had done this before and remembered that you can take a number 11 knife and heat up the tip with a torch and then plunge that right next to the horn so you're only heating up the epoxy that's right there and that worked like a charm I took my time I was able to get the knife in there I got this eased out I got a new blade cleaned everything up inside the rudder cleaned up this horn again and got it reset now I got plenty of movement on my rudder and I'm just waiting on this to finish curing to hook up this rod again. And then I shouldn't have any issues now with getting that movement. Uh, another thing to mention when I was putting the tail on this, and it's something that I had planned to do anyway, but I'll caution you guys, when I put this on, I had borrowed from my buddy Gary this incidence meter because I knew I wanted to check and make sure the incidence of this tail was zero in reference to the wing. And what I found was this tail set at negative two or about negative one, one and a half degrees. So that meant the leading edge was high in reference to the wing. So I'm glad I had the incidence meter to check that rather than just throwing this tail in and having to fight it. I had that with another airplane and it just never flew right. I did all kinds of trim to it, but never could overcome the fact that it just wasn't built right. So if you have the chance or the resources, definitely borrow or buy or do something, but get an incidence meter and check this before you get everything epoxied in. And then on mine, the other thing I had was across the back of the tail, it was twisted. So this side was actually high in reference to the wing when I lined up the wing. So I actually took some sandpaper and got in that groove and actually shaved that really carefully until I got these to line up right to left and then I got my incidents right front to back and now I feel really good about how this is going to fly. 
it's going to do great. I've got most all my electronics in and where I wanted them. So I've got everything here, all my BEC stuff run up through here, tied onto this little piece I added. Going across to the wings, I got my, my leads for my wings sticking out here. And then these white tubes are actually coffee stirrers. But I like to use these, they work great. They're cheap, free, just go grab some at a Divi store. But these will keep my antennas nice and straight and in place when I'm flying. So I've got one going across, one going down the fuselage, and then here in the back, as high as I could get it, I mounted the remote receiver. So I should have a minimum of two antennas seeing the control at all times, no matter what the orientation is. I did this on my last plane and it worked out great. I had very few frame losses. So that's really about where I am. Uh, I'm on to needing to put on the main gear, finish putting the cowling on, get it drilled out. Um, but yeah, so the next time you see it, it should be ready to go, uh, ready for a maiden. All right, guys, talk to you later.